Alright, tonight is the night where I have decided to just finally do it. I'm gonna finally do this video on Serbia and why it is dying and how to fix it. Especially since Serbs are among the fastest dying people on the planet because their birth rate is way below replacement levels. And yes, I know, some of you guys that know me on Discord are probably saying that you're just tired of hearing me talk about Serbia. Now, there's a big reason why I'm actually doing this video, and not just because I volunteered to do it for the sake of a good friend of mine, but because it's really easy for someone to cuck out and twist the facts about this particular country to make it look like, oh, you don't really need to take women's rights away, that's not the actual problem, when it actually is, and I'm going to demonstrate as to why. So here's a quick little backstory for those who weren't watching Halsey's stream that night when TFM kind of finally blew up. So TFM was asked multiple times about his views on Serbia, then he finally got frustrated and said, okay, I don't care about Serbia, all I care about is you taking your women's rights away, and that is how you save your country. And of course, that is to put things very plainly. So I wanted to actually show the guy he was talking to exactly what he means by that before he takes it the wrong way. And as I was doing some research, I was finding data that actually contradicted what we've been saying all along. But anyone who is not educated on the subject could look at this data and say, oh yeah, you don't really have to do this. So I decided to resolve all of this once and for all. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. So what I'm gonna tell you first are things that are true, yet they can be misleading when you actually come into this conclusion. Now, as TFM and I have said several times that working women tend to have fewer children, as well as women that are more educated. Now, look at this statistic here. 53.7% of women are either unemployed or not looking for a job. That sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Now, there's a bit more to it than this, and I'm gonna circle back to this in a moment because we're gonna take a look, we're gonna have a surface look at this first. Okay, next. If you actually Google the term Serbian women's rights, you're gonna find articles like this one saying, Serbian women's rights, dot, 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 are not the priority. And you're gonna find several others like it. This one in particular that I pulled up is mostly a bunch of sob stories, but it's actually very telling. And I'm saying that because it confirms a lot of things TFM has been saying about women in the workforce, particularly them dropping out of the workforce after a certain point. But that is not related to what we're going to talk about here, so I'm just going to leave it in the description. You guys can read it if you want. Okay, and last, Serbian women got the right to vote in 1941. But when they did, there was no sharp decline in population. Now, all three of those things that I just brought up, they're based on facts, and they are true. But I worded them in a way that would actually imitate someone that's actually trying to convince you that women's rights is actually not the problem. This is my way of saying, don't be fooled. But there's one more thing that I'm gonna bring up about Serbia that I'm actually not going to twist. And that is their welfare state. Now they do not have a massively generous welfare state, which is good, but based on what I've read, and, I, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, they're actually quite selective on who actually gets that welfare. For an example, I saw an article stating that Roma gypsies are not entitled to welfare in Serbia. And keep in mind that article was from 2002, so I don't know if things may have changed or not. So with all that out the way, why does Serbia have such a low fertility rate? And uh, largely, a lot of it does have to do with the Yugoslav war. So let's be honest, war is hell, especially if you're the one fighting it, that is. But the war has actually had a pretty big impact on industry and job prospects, so a lot of industries that used to be in Serbia, they're pretty much gone, and it just hasn't really recovered ever since. So what happened is, you have a lot of the younger people that actually want to get themselves established and find themselves work, they find themselves leaving Serbia to go to other parts of Europe, United States, or Canada. Now, in 2018, 60% of young people were planning to leave Serbia. Not saying wanting, but planning. Hinting that they're actually going to follow through with it. Now, here's where things are going to actually start getting a bit obvious for you. So, in addition to wanting to leave Serbia to look for work and having job prospects, the younger people are also saying they're looking for better education. So, there's a 20-year-old woman named Giovanna. In this article, she's saying, 
in order for us to stay, offer us better quality education. And that does not mean Serbian authorities should invest more in the curricula, but in staff too, she adds. And because of all this, you have 9 out of 10 young people unmarried, almost 7 out of 10 of them living with their families, of course, big surprise, and about only 1 out of 10 young people live in their own apartment. So, see what's going on? When women get educated, they don't want to marry men that don't have jobs or don't make adequate money. And men instinctively know this whether they want to admit it or not. So the men go to other places to find work and possibly find wives if that's what they want. And the women actually go out looking for work as well, knowing that there's better prospects for husbands elsewhere. And the Serbian government has been trying to bend over backwards trying to get them to start dating, but they won't. They just won't do it. Hey, but Shogun, wait a minute. I thought you said 53.7% of women actually didn't want to work or just aren't looking for work. So yes, once again, that is true, but there's more to it than that. Because in actuality, the unemployment rate between both genders was actually no more than 20%. And the reason why the unemployment rate among women is going up so high is because you have all these women that are retiring from work. It's mostly the women 55 and up that are not working. And add in the fact that Serbia has an aging population, it also makes perfect sense. All the young people, and in this case especially the young women, are leaving, but the older people are staying. They're not leaving. Although Serbia does have a pimp hand regarding women's rights, sadly their pimp hand is not quite strong enough. But if you were to restrict women's freedom to choose, meaning they're not required to yield to the authority of the father or the husband, then they would have no choice but to stay in their home countries. Now, a good example of this is Spain, because after World War II, Spain was in some pretty terrible shape. For 20 years, everybody, well, not everybody, most people were well below the poverty line and lived extremely poor. It wasn't until the 1960s when they started to build themselves out of their depression. So I don't exactly have an answer to their industry problem, but I believe if Spain can figure it out, I believe Serbia can too. Now, even though Serbia is not a country that goes crazy with giving women's rights like the West, the uh, US and Canada especially do, it is still attributing to the negative population growth. So remember when I talked about Serbia's population not rising ever since women got the right to vote? So, once again, that is true, but what I intentionally left out was this. They haven't had a population growth percentage in the double digits ever since then. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that it was not the Yugoslav War that actually started the lower birth rate. It wasn't until the Yugoslav War started that their birth rates went below replacement levels, which is 2.1, I might add. So, would you like another example? Since quote-unquote Kosovo is Serbia, let's look at the population between 1961 and 1991. Over 30 years, the population dropped 23%. But either way, 1991 is actually still pretty interesting because I was actually talking to my Serbian friend and he told me that there was a mandatory conscription law that actually existed back then. And he told me that women were actually conscripted as well. Now, unfortunately, I was not actually able to get figures on this and get actual percentages on how many women actually served, as well as how long they've actually had this conscription law. But if women are actually fighting wars, then they're obviously not going to have time to have babies, are they? On top of that, women in the military, especially like the, the upper class ones, the ones that actually can meet the male standard, they have been known to find themselves sterilized afterwards. Once again, illustrating as to why you can't just quote-unquote force them to be equal to men. And lastly, just in case you're thinking, well, Serbia's not really doing all that bad population-wise. They had over 7 million people since 1970s. Well, you need a maintainable population for two primary reasons. One, if you don't have enough people to maintain your infrastructure and you have an aging population, then you don't have enough young people to actually replace the workers as they retire. And secondly, and this is the Serbians' worst nightmare, their Muslim neighbors are going to take them over because they don't have enough military men to fight them off. So instead of you removing kebab, the kebab removes you. But in closing, I'm going to say this. 
I acknowledge that Serbia actually has multiple issues that they must overcome if they're going to save their population and save their country. And there's not just one solution that's just going to magically fix it, I understand that. But taking your women's rights away, including their voting rights, and most importantly, their freedom to choose, is what's going to help Serbia in the long run. So if your ultimate goal is to quote unquote remove kebab, you have to beat them at their own game, which is outbreed them first of all. And second, once you've actually had the numbers, then you don't have to rely on mass immigration and you don't have to worry about them forcefully taking you over, especially when you have the numbers. Trust me on this, it's literally a numbers game. So with that being said, I bid you adieu and I will leave you with these last few words. Seps pu granator bozja ruka vodi, tamur gerjet posarjemo ona i pogoti.